Hey everybody, Roger Levin here with your Practice Production Pearl of the Week. I lectured at an implant conference recently, a big one. There were specialists, there were general dentists, and I was making the point that so often general dentists add new services to their practice and we really do it poorly. Now, I'm a general dentist and I do understand, I was 10 years full time, but when you add a new service, you need a plan because if you don't have a plan, you're just playing at it and that's what most of us do. It's not because we're lazy, it's not even because we don't know what to do, although that's part of it, it's more because we already have this robust practice happening. We get excited about a new service, whether it's for financial gain, whether it's interesting to us, whether we think it's gonna be good for our patients. And we have this whole practice going, so we just add this little extra thing over here, but we don't really pay that much attention to it. It's sort of like buying a plant and forgetting to water it. What's gonna happen? It's either gonna look pretty bad, meaning at a, the service would stay at a minor level, or it's just going to die, which also happens a lot as well. So when you add a new service, there's steps you should take. Living Group is all about systems. We even have systems for how to add a new service. And adding a new service comes with one, learning curve. The doctor has to learn how to perform the service. Two, learning curve for the clinical staff. They have to learn how to assist the doctor on the new service. Three, learning curve for the front desk team because they get questions about the new service. Remember, four out of five patients following a treatment presentation ask a question about it when they get up to the front desk. Four, patients need to be educated about the new service. So four sub one is we send an email to all patients announcing the new service. Four sub two, we write a short script to tell every patient on the phone, new or current, that we have a new service. 4.3, four sub three, I should say, hygienists have a script to educate every patient who comes in the door politely and subtly about the new service. Four sub four, we monitor what type of patients are taking advantage of the service. And I don't mean that somebody needs the service and it's obvious, I mean, who's accepting it? What is the socioeconomic educational background of the patient? Are only wealthier patients accepting it? Are all levels of patients accepting it? Are more educated patients accepting it? Are people asking questions what they read off of the internet? Who's the population accepting it? Now, this is dangerous because you might think, oh, I'm just gonna then work heavily to educate those type of patients about it. But it could mean that you're not doing the right job of educating other populations of patients about it. All of this plays into the new service. Uh, four sub five, tracking and monitoring results. How much production is coming from the new service? How many cases are you doing? What is the trend line? Is it growing, flat, declining? That's what you wanna know if you're gonna take the time to implement a new service into your practice. And then there's the whole marketing program that we're not gonna go into today, but when you add a new service, you now have the idea you need a system around that new service. Remember, practice production and practice success are directly proportional to the services that you offer. As always, I wish you increased practice production every year, and I'll see you next week.